All right. Uh, my name is Mike Uzina of Menorcan Magic uh, Handmade Cast Nets. And I'm here in uh, the old ancient city of St. Augustine, Florida. And uh, I want to talk to you today because I think a lot of people really don't have any idea of the history of fishing nets and then fishing nets in general. Uh, you know, uh, Phil and I go to, go to places around talking to people, a lot of tourists, and you'd be surprised at how many people in their 60s have no idea that fishing nets were always, that were once made totally by hand. That is webbing, all webbing nets were made by hand. They, they thought you just went to a store and bought a net like they do now, but that is not so. So we'll go into some of the history. We go back, uh, webbing, remnants of webbing have carbon dated back 20,000 years. Uh, and, and we're going to go on, come forward a bit to 10,000 years when actually the first uh, net, the early nets were, were uh, seines. And your early nets were made out of reeds, uh, barks, grasses, flax, whatever they could find to, uh, uh, to uh, put into twine that they could to make nets with. That's what they used. So the, uh, that, the, uh, the, First net that they really knew was a net, I could say it was about 10,000 years ago, it was found in a dried up lake bed, and they found enough of the remnants of it to know, in fact, that it was a fishing net. Now, uh, your cast nets didn't come into play until some 5,000 years later. Uh, about 5,000 years ago, your Egyptians uh, started using uh, cast nets they, uh, there's been complete nets found in Egyptian tombs that date 5,000 years. Uh, they drawings on the walls, you know, of, of, of fishing nets. So we know that pretty much that we get uh, uh, cast nets about that far. Now, as we come forward in time, the uh, cast nets pretty much have been the same ex ex exception of improvements. Now, the... Uh, the Polynesians, uh, we feel that were the first ones to take and uh, uh, make the major change to a net. Your early cast nets was simply a net that you would cast into the water. Didn't have a hand line on it. Didn't have braille lines to bag it, to make a bag. You would cast the net into the water and you'd have to, the, the fisherman would have to dive down, remove the fish from under the net, or fold it up into a pouch and lift it into the boat or onto the land. Now that that went on for some time uh, until the point of the Polynesians. I feel like about a thousand years ago, as best I can research and find, that the Polynesians put what, the net as you know it today. And that is a net that has a has the lead line. I've lead that has the braille lines uh, and a horn and a swivel and a hand line. So that's pretty much. Uh, we know that. Now the the uh, uh, the, the dates that we I want to give you some dates that uh, really revolutionized fishing as we know it. Uh, now the first date being uh, uh, 1939 when Dupont Company patented synthetic material. Now synthetic material. Uh, we know what that is. That's that's your just your plastics, your poly, uh, your nylon, rayon, dacron. Uh, they uh, <clears throat> Dupont had a vision of, uh, and, it, and it wasn't about cast nets. I can tell you, his his original uh, reason for the synthetic material for nylon in particular was to make stockings for ladies. Ladies like to cover their legs. Uh, and they were a hit. They flew off the shelf. So, uh, and, and then everything's going well. This is, uh, you know, like I say, in the, in, the, in the late 1930s. And what happens in 1941? Along comes the war. Well, the war changed everything in reference to what you could buy and what you couldn't buy, what you could find, you couldn't find. Uh, all of your, your uh Materials were taken up for the war effort. I'm talking about brass, copper, lead, steel, your fabrics, everything was, was taken up for the war effort. And uh, that went along until uh, the war ends in 1945. 
and so things start to settle down into uh, a, a normal pattern. And I got involved, at, I was old enough, probably about 48 or 49, I started making, got involved in making, my father taught me how to make a uh, cash nest. And we were still making them out of cotton that late. But uh, it was long about uh, the uh, not early 50s when nylon twine started showing up. Was it real good, but it didn't take it long for them to improve that. And we started making nylon cast nets as opposed to the cotton. Cotton was a terrible maintenance issue. Uh, uh, it would shrink uh, if you didn't wash it and dry it. Uh, uh, when you finished, when you used it, it was going to rot on you. So uh, it was it wasn't a very good stuff to use. And of course, before that was linen. Linen was probably the same way. Linen's made out of flax. Flax grows in the Mediterranean. Linen's still being used in, 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 uh, for clothing today. But uh, we, we're going back to the to the cast nets, and, and uh, we took and uh, we started making nets out of the out of the nylon. And, but there's some dates coming up again. I told you the first date was 1939. The second one that you really don't want to forget this one because this revolutionized uh, the fishing netting industry as we know it today, and that would have been 1952. Prior to 1952, all webbing, whatever kind of webbing it may have been, uh, netting of all sorts, fish nets of all sorts, uh, was uh, made by hand. The Japanese in 1952 patented the first webbing machine. They started making webbing with a machine. Uh, and uh, they made it out of nylon. They made it out of, uh, uh, of monofilament. Uh, and it didn't take the fishermen long to figure out how to take uh, and cut panels out of that flat webbing and pie shape, it started, they first started making them, out of, make them pie shape, and they would sew them together and, and make a net. It was much faster, uh, they could make the nets much bigger, and, and more important to them, it was cheaper. Uh, so the, so that's, that's what happened. Now, your monofilament would forget it. You, you could not make a net out of monofilament uh, back then because it was like wire. I can remember, I uh, used to put monofilament on reels to fish with, and you try to cast it, and all it would do is backlash. <laughs> that was bad. But again, the third date I want to tell you about that is going to put you where we are today, and that is 1959. Again, we're talking about the DuPont Company. They improved uh, monofilament uh, to a much softer, more pliable material, and they call it serene. And uh, that's where we are now, where they make all your monofilament nets that you see, uh, handmade, uh, uh, store-bought nets today. You can buy nets at Walmarts and every place under the sun sells them now. And, and uh, you can buy a Chinese net. Uh, uh, if, if I sell I sell uh, handmade nylon and Decron nets, I have to get, uh, for the cost of the material, I mean, I have to get $350 for a seven-foot uh, uh, nylon net. Uh, you can buy a Chinese um, uh, store-bought monofilament net probably for 50 bucks or less, but then you have to see what you get. Uh, the uh, the store-bought nets simply they won't last as long. Uh, they they won't open near as good. They won't uh, they won't fish as well, uh, and, and uh, it's just you know, it's hard to convince people of that fact. But and it's what it is. But uh, uh, I think we've pretty well covered everything. I don't know. Uh, uh, the important dates were 39, 52, and 59. Those are the three dates that revolutionized, uh, revolutionized the fishing industry. And uh, w with all of that said, I have a website that you can look up. I'm also, I also have some other videos on YouTube that that you might find on making, making cast nets. Phil and I made cast net sinkers and and we've done uh, sewing sinkers on a net and different things that you might find uh, that will help you along if you're interested in making a net uh, by, uh, by hand. I have a, a, a cast net making video that, that's available. And uh, you can find us uh, on Menorcan Magic 
Magicmagic.com, and that is M-E-N-O-R-C-A-N, M-A-G-I-C, one word, dot com. That's our website that you can like, find. And again, we're on YouTube. And I hope the information I've given you is it is fashionable. And uh, I do hope that you find it interesting and get something out of it. And uh, with that said, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.